Hi, my name is AJ and thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. If you're not a current subscriber, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the like button because you're going to like this video and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. Today we're going to talk about the difference between short-term investing and long-term investing and why it's important to you and what you should do based on either your personality or based on your goals when you're investing. Let's first start with the definition of short-term investing. Short-term investing is any investment that's held for less than a year. So if you buy a stock or an index or an exchange traded fund, or if you buy gold, whatever that investment is, if you sell it less than a year from the time of your initial purchase, that is considered a short-term investment. So that means that anything that's held for longer than a year, is considered a long-term investment. Short-term investing can be called by a few different names. Uh, you may recognize some people say that they're a trader or that they're involved in trading or swing trading, day trading. Those are different forms of basically saying that this person is a short-term investor. With day trading, what you're doing is you're buying stocks on one day and before the end of that day, you sell whatever investments that you bought. Usually when people are day trading, they're trying to take advantage of short-term swings in the market. People are investing large sums of money over a short period of time in order to make hundreds, hundreds of dollars or maybe even thousands of dollars in gains in one day. So if you're looking to make income from your trading and if you have the time to do it, obviously if you're working a day job, it's a lot harder to day trade, then day trading may be for you. A second form of short-term investing I mentioned was swing trading. And a swing trade is anything that's held for longer than a day and it could be held for multiple days, multiple weeks, or even multiple months. And again, just like day trading, you're trying to take advantage of short-term fluctuations in a stock's price. So it could be that, you know, maybe a company is announcing some big news and your expectation is that the news is going to be something that's going to cause the stock to either rise in price or to drop in price because you can trade both ways. You can trade positive and you can trade negative. And a negative trade is called a short. With short-term investing, you have to have more knowledge than the average person. You have to learn about the different chart patterns that you may wanna look for in order to decide when you're gonna go into a specific stock or maybe you know a specific stock that you're always watching, maybe the entry point that you could get in in order to make that short-term gain. And you also wanna look at different indicators that you can set up in order to recognize some of those patterns or set notifications so that you'll know when a certain pattern or a certain percentage drop in a stock's price. These are all the things that you would want to know about or learn about in order to be successful with short-term trading. Other things that you could look at are things like quarterly reports. You can look at things that are happening in the news. Those are a few things that you can look at in order to take advantage of the short-term changes, whether up or down in a stock's price. Now with long-term investing, while it is very helpful to have more knowledge in the market, you don't have to have as much knowledge to be successful with long-term investing. There are some people that are very successful and just picking stocks and companies that they just happen to know about or a stock that they really believe in. Like maybe you really believe in social media. So you're buying all of the social media stocks. You notice Facebook, you know, before they had billions of users, maybe when they were just in the, in the colleges and before they were opened up to the rest of non-college students. And even back then you're like, wow, this is gonna be a great company. I'm gonna invest in them in the future as soon as they're available on the stock market. Or maybe there are specific products you use, maybe like an Apple iPhone or Android from Google or many other products or clothing or food places that you eat at. You can invest in all of these places. And of course, if you're investing in something you know, you're more likely to hold on to that stock and you're more likely to know whether or not it's losing popularity or people are no longer shopping at those stores or buying those products. And even without that knowledge, you can invest in the total stock market. So if you don't know anything about any specific companies, you don't want to do the research. You just want to benefit from the U.S. economy, basically. What you can do is just invest in a total stock market ETF or, or an index fund like the S&P 500. And then that way you're investing in the U.S. economy. And as the economy grows, your money will grow right along with it. And a big thing that most beginner investors don't really know is that 
by investing in a total stock market ETF or an index fund like the S&P 500, you can actually beat 80 to 90% of the money managers out there. Because with the money managers, their goal is to beat that stock market average, which is the total stock market. Or their goal may be to beat the NASDAQ or to beat the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones, which are, those are three different indexes that people use those as barometers to tell whether or not they are doing well in the stock market with their individual stock selections. And the problem is most of them cannot beat the market on a consistent basis. Anyone can beat the market for a year or two or maybe even three years, but to do it for five, 10, 20 or 30 years down the road, it's really hard for 80 to 90% of these professional traders, people who devote their lives, they spend their free time reading, they spend their eight hour day at work reading about these different companies, reading quarterly reports. They have all of this knowledge and this ability that the average person does not have who's not in those industries and 80 to 90 percent of them still can't beat the market so even as a long-term investor someone that has less knowledge you can beat professionals just by staying consistent and investing in the total stock market or investing in an s p 500 index fund and that's what i recommend for most people that are beginning with investing now let's talk about taxes because taxes whenever you're dealing with money that's something that we all have to worry about so now the big difference between short-term investing versus long-term investing is that with short-term investing, you're going to be taxed at your normal income rate. With long-term investing, there's a separate tax rate called the capital gains tax rate. But let's first start with talking about short-term investing and how you're taxed based on your personal income bracket. So if you look at the different tax brackets, you'll see that the lowest tax bracket is at 10% and then the highest tax bracket is at 37%. Most people fall within the 12% and the 22% tax bracket, which are the second and third level. And even jumping from that 12% to 22%, that's almost doubling the amount of tax you have to pay just by entering in a new tax bracket. Now, the amount of money that you make is taxed at those different tiers. Under a certain amount, you're only taxed at 10%. Once you go above that amount, which for a single person is $9,700, after you go over $9,700 of income, the additional income that you make is taxed at 12%. At the top of that 12% tax bracket for single people is $39,475. Once you go over that mark, any money that you make above that is taxed at 22%. Now, most people fall within that 12% and a 22% tax bracket. Now, if you're day trading or swing trading, which are forms of short-term trading, that means you're gonna be taxed at those tax rates. So let's say at your regular job, you get paid $35,000 a year, but you're also day trading or you're swing trading. And let's say you make $10,000. By making that extra $10,000 trading, you're actually putting yourself into that 22% tax bracket. Most of that $10,000 that you made is going to be taxed at 22%. However, if you decided to hold any investments that you put money into for at least a year, then that's when you're taxed at the capital gains rate. Now it still takes in consideration your overall income. So let's say you're at the very top of the 12% tax bracket, you're making $39,475. And this is the example we're gonna use for taxes compared to short-term trading and long-term trading. And let's say you make $10,000 exactly. So with short-term trading, that $10,000 would be taxed at a 22% rate because that's the income bracket that you're now in because of that extra $10,000 that you made. However, if you held a stock, for at least a year and then you sold, you would be taxed at a 15% rate because with the capital gains rate, there are only three tax brackets. The first tax bracket for capital gains is 0%. So if you make as a single person under $39,000, then the gains that you made in the stock market won't be taxed. Once you make over $39,375, it's a $100 difference, then you're taxed at a 15% tax rate. And it's not until you make over $434,000 that the next tax bracket for capital gains goes up to 20%. So most people will fall within that zero to 15% capital gains tax rate. So it's really important to make the decision if you're worried about taxes to hold your stocks for over a year. That way, once you do sell them, you're only taxed at the capital gains tax rate, which could be zero for you or at, for most people, 15% taxes at the most. Now, another benefit from not only when you make gains in the stock market, but if you sell something and you actually have a loss, 
So let's say you had a $10,000 loss in these stocks that you sold. With short-term trading, of course, you would get the same tax deduction that you would with long-term investing because there is no gain. You only get taxed at the capital gains rate if there is an actual gain. With a loss, no matter whether it's short-term or it's long-term, that will be a tax deduction for you up to $3,000 per year. And the great thing about this is that you can actually roll it over to the next year. So if you had a $10,000 loss instead of a $10,000 gain, although you're only able to claim $3,000 of that loss per year, you can claim the other $3,000 next year and then another $3,000 a year after that, and then $1,000 to make a total of $10,000 over a four year period. Another thing you could do is that while you're also selling something where you have a gain, let's say you had a $10,000 gain and you have an option to sell something at a $10,000 loss, you can basically sell both of those stocks and you have no gain at all. You basically have $10,000 worth of free gains because you're taking advantage of that $10,000 loss as well in a separate stock. And with the stock that you're actually losing in, you can actually buy that stock back, but there are rules as far as how soon you can buy it back. And this is called a wash sale. So basically, if you sell a stock where you have a loss, you can't claim the tax deduction if you rebuy that same stock or what they call a substantially identical stock within 30 days. So let's say you buy Apple, you sell it at a loss, you had a $10,000 loss, you have to wait at least 30 days before you can buy Apple back because it's something that you know maybe that you want to hold for a long term. You don't want to just get rid of it just in order to gain that $10,000 or that $3,000 deduction from that $10,000 loss in our example. Now many people and actually many services, companies like Wealthfront and Betterment, they actually do tax loss harvesting, which is what this is called at the end of the year. And they can do that automatically for you within your investment account with those companies. Those are a couple of companies that I know that do it. Those aren't the only ones. So if you wanna look up other companies that have this automated process, uh, personal capital being a third one that I know of, uh, just search tax loss harvesting. And I'll put a few links in the description talking about that as well. Now, another way you can make sure that you're in a lower tax bracket, whether it's with your short term trades or with your long term trades to get that capital gains tax is to do something to lower your taxable income. And there are a few things that you can do, like putting more money into your 401k or an HSA or an IRA, because those are done pre tax as long as it's not a Roth account. And that can actually help lower your taxable income. So at the end of any given year, you can take a look at any sales of investments that you want to make and also look at the income that you've made over the year. And if you need to put a little extra money in your 401k, you want to do that before the end of the year to help with that tax deduction. But with IRAs, you actually have up until April of the next year where you can contribute to an IRA to help lower your taxable income. So as a recap, this video was about short term investing and long term investing and talking about what's best for the beginner investor and what takes the most knowledge, what takes the most effort and time, and also what the effects are as far as your taxes when you trade short term versus trading long term. Thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate you taking this time out of your day. If you found this helpful at all and you're not a subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button right now. Hit that like button because you really like this video and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I make a video just like this. Again, thanks for watching. Guys, have a great day.